Welcome back. In this video, I'll be helping to familiarize you with the ribbon interface of InfraWizard, and we'll have a quick look at the different commands in it. The ribbon tab of InfraWizard is divided into several panels. The first one is for creating networks. You can create networks basically in two ways, either by converting AutoCAD lines and polylines into pipes, or by importing networks from external data files. And this is one of the powerful features of InfraWizard, because you can import networks in several formats. This includes shapefiles, which is the basic format of GIS data, but it can be exported from many hydraulic modeling applications like WaterGems, SewerGems, Autodesk SSA, and many others. You can also import text files, which is a useful feature if you're using spreadsheets in your design. And you can import the native IMP format of EPANET and SWAM, which are related to EPANET application for water networks modeling and EPASWAM application for drainage system design. Many hydraulic modeling applications also export models into this IMP format, so you can theoretically import your hydraulic models from any modeling environment to InfraWizard very quickly to set up your project. The next part of the ribbon is for managing networks. You'll find here a small panel through which you can manage your networks. It shows the properties of them, the network type, display, the assigned styles and surfaces, and you can add, rename, and delete networks here as well. And here is the plan styles. You use them to control the look of the networks on plan and their annotations. For example, I can select to show pipe thickness on plan. And here I can select the annotations to appear and adjust the format of each one. I can then go to Manage Networks and choose the plan style to be applied to each network. And here is the Pipe Library, which saves a catalog of conduit sections that can be used in the project. There are two types of section shape there, which are circular and box sections. Each type contains a set of materials that represent different materials of pipes and possibly the different strength classes of them. Each material has a list of standard conduit dimensions of it. This is the reference library from which you assign sizes to the pipes in your project. And you can, of course, import and export them for reuse across different projects. Then we reach the Modify panel. And generally, you may use several ways to modify and edit your networks. The simplest is by double-clicking a pipe or a node to edit its properties. And you have the Group Edit feature, which lets you edit the properties of a set of pipes and nodes in tables. I can here, for example, use Edit All to change the structure definition for all nodes, so I can edit a hundred of them with one click. And we have some standard operations to modify the networks like splitting a pipe, merging two or more pipes, unifying the slope of a pipeline, reverse, add, or remove vertices in a pipe, and update ground levels, which is used to pick node ground levels from a surface. We'll go through all these features in detail in several videos of this tutorial series. And here is the most interesting part of InfraWizard, which is the Analyze panel. And analyze here means geometric analysis, not hydraulic analysis. There are two types of geometric analysis you can do. You can find the low points and high points in a pressure network. And this is used for defining the locations of air vents and drain valves in pressure networks. And the more important analysis is the crossing points. For example, if I create another pipe here, let's say it's a new network. Call it WW and it is a pressure network. You can see that once I created this new pipe, a crossing point was annotated here. And for example, if I change the level of this pipe, you'll find that the clearance is instantly changed. So InfraWizard detects the crossings and updates the annotation of them automatically while you're working.
And by the way, you can see here this green mark and this red mark. And these are related to the low and high points. And for example, I'm changing the mark size here. And if I move this node from this point to that point, you see what happened. InfraWizard changed the annotation to the new crossing point and recalculated the levels and clearance. And this is always happening instantly. And if I click this, I can select what crossing points are displayed and what are not displayed. And I can check this option for critical crossings only. For example, I have a clearance of 0.39 at this point. So if I set the critical clearance here to 0.3, this crossing shouldn't be shown because it has more than the critical clearance. I'll click OK, and you see the annotation has disappeared. But if I open it again and set the critical clearance to 0.4 instead of 0.3, this annotation will appear again. Another thing to notice is that you can never erase a crossing annotation. If you erase it, it will appear again. And the low and high point marks cannot be erased using the Erase command. The right way to control the display of crossing annotations is by using the Settings panel. If I want to hide the annotations, I should choose the crossing combinations and move them to the undisplayed list. Let me change it again. And here we have the refresh crossings command. We saw that crossing annotations are instantly updated while we're working, so you don't need to press refresh crossings when you make edits to your networks. You only need to use the refresh crossings command when you change the coordinate system of the drawing. I'm doing this right now, for example. I'm changing the coordinate system to a custom UCS. The annotation became inclined. I'll press Refresh Crossings. See, it's now realigned horizontally. Now we reach my favorite part, which is the Profiles panel. Here is where you create and manage your longitudinal profiles. First, let's do some edits to our network to help illustrating the Profiles module. For example, let's make a group edit. I'll assign some ground levels, say 5, 4, and let me change the invert levels of the pipe also to be 3 and 2. You notice that the crossing annotation has disappeared because the pipe we edited became higher, so there's a lot of clearance. Now let's click Manage Profiles, click Add Profile, Automatic Pipe Selection, and select the only line we have here. You can see that we have a lot of options in this dialog that we'll be covering in detail in the Profile session. I'm just creating a quick one right now, and here we go. You can see that we've got our simple profile just in a few seconds. It has the ground levels, invert levels, and other data. The crossing pipe is shown, and there's a lot of options that we can play with. We have profile styles here where we can control the format and contents of the profile, and we'll be covering all of those in a separate session. And here is the command update profiles, which we use when we make edits. For example, I'll change the diameter of this pipe from 200 millimeters to 300 millimeters. I instantly get this mark, needs update. It tells me the data on this profile became outdated and the profile needs to be regenerated. When I double click it, now it shows the updated diameter 300 millimeters. Very simple. And if I have several profiles, I would use the update profiles command to have all of them updated in one go. And here is where you save time with InfraWizard. If you have like a hundred profiles, you can save tens of hours you'd spend in drafting work because InfraWizard produces profiles fully formatted. And as we previously saw, you can import data from hydraulic models very quickly and use the automatic profile detection to draw all profiles of the network in one click. Let's move now to the export panel. You may export your networks here in two formats, 
shapefiles, and text files. You can so use the data of your networks to continue work on GIS, spreadsheets, or calculate the bill of quantities. And here you can get your BIM model. I can include data with geometry in the export. It just takes a few seconds until I get my 3D model. So simple. You get your BIM model in the form of 3D solids in a drawing, and you can export it to Navisworks using the command NWC out to integrate it into your project's model. We'll have a complete session talking about the production of BIM models and importing them to Navisworks. I think that's great for now. You're now familiar with InfraWizard commands and can start playing around to try things. In the next video, I'll tell you some information about the basics of InfraWizard networks and a few rules to bear in mind when working with them. And this is going to be the last introductory session before I start explaining in detail each feature of InfraWizard. See you soon.